New for 2024, the Hammerley Arms Force B1 22LR straight pole rifle. Straight pole meaning it's a straight pole bolt action style rifle and it features a 1022 compatible magazine on it. The 1022 magazine on here is directly from Ruger, but it does feature somewhat of like a spacer. The little spacer actually will clip on the back of the magazine. It fits on the Ruger 1022 magazines, which this ships with one 1022 magazine from Ruger and another spacer so you can hook it on to another 1022 magazine for ultimate compatibility. Outside the magazine, the trigger on here is gonna be a four and a half to 5.8 pound trigger. Uh, it's a little bit on the heavier side and does actually have a trigger blade on there, which is a little bit different from a lot of the rifles you see out there. But overall, it's a fairly good trigger. There's not really any creep I'm noticing in it and it breaks crisp and clean. It's just a touch on the heavier side compared to some of its competitors. That is okay because what's really neat about this rifle is that the trigger assembly itself is compatible with all your competition 1022 trigger sets that you can go out there and get. So if it's something you want to upgrade and do, you can do very easily. Now the barrel on this rifle is a 16 inch cold drawn steel barrel. The barrel itself is half inch by 28 threads and you'll see up here we have a GSL Woodland 22 suppressor on here. The barrel is free floated, but what's really cool about it is that the barrel itself actually has a quick change barrel system. So meaning it's like a takedown system if you've seen on some of the other rifles. So you can actually pull the barrel nut back and release it and it has ball bearings which lock in there and it's very stiff and sturdy. But outside of this 16 inch barrel, there is going to be a 20 inch match grade barrel that you can actually get for this rifle and really set this thing up for target accuracy. The stock itself is a polymer type stock. It's a little bit hollow in the rear here, but that's because the stock itself is adjustable for length of pole. In addition to the length of pole adjustment with a button on the rear of the butt pad, you can in addition to that, adjust the cheek piece height. It is two position. Now on the bottom here, there's a QD socket for attaching a quick detach sling, which you'll see there's not another attachment up here, but if you're familiar with M-Lock whatsoever, you know that M-Lock accepts QD sockets you put on here. Now on this one, I attached a Picatinny rail section and I have the Magpul MOE bipod on here. So we are gonna shoot this thing a bit today, shoot it for some accuracy, see how it does with say cheap crappy ammunition and also some higher end range ammunition. We'll see how it does. Up top though, it has a rail section on here. It is a full Picatinny rail. There's no special slots or anything like that in there, which you see a lot from Vergara, Tika, and some of the other ones, or even Springfield's 22, is that there's little sections in there where you can't just mount any rings you want and take scopes off other rifles and put it on here. This is just a full length, uninterrupted Picatinny rail. It's not any MOA, it's standard zero MOA. And up top, we have a primary arms SLX 3 to 18. This scope, we've used it quite a bit. It's a great scope. It's a perfect little scope for this rifle. And it has a good crisp reticle with a small design, flip up caps. And then it's mounted for the record with Night Force low standard duty rings. So we've talked about this thing quite a bit. We're gonna show you guys how the bolt runs with rounds in the chamber and see how it actually performs. And we'll close it out after we see how this rifle performs. On the range now with the all new Hammerly Arms Force B1. Um, got a rough zero on this, just for the rough zero, American Eagle, this is high velocity 22 caliber, 38 grain copper plated hollow point. Generally speaking, people like to say this is not accurate. However, um, in some rifles we've shot off camera, it is very accurate and it's, a, it's an excellent hunting round. Um, this rifle is lightweight. I think it's gonna be a really accurate rifle from what I've seen so far and just zeroing. In addition to zeroing today, uh, we got the all new Garmin Zero Chronograph in. We ordered this thing. As you know, these things are extremely hard to get right now. We were fortunate enough to find one in stock, ordered it. So we're gonna shoot a little bit today and play with it. So you'll see a little bit of that thing functioning with this video. But after we shoot this stuff, I'm gonna shoot groups with a bunch of different ammos. Um, I will do fouling groups, five round fouling groups for each one of the ammos we do. We'll cover all the ammos I shoot and you guys will see how this thing groups entirely. A couple quick things to note too, is you'll notice that I'm not shooting with any hearing protection. We do have a suppressor on this 22. If you're unfamiliar, 22 is in a suppressor. Very quiet. Uh, it's well below, let's say, your safe hearing level. So we're gonna be good with that. It's kind of nice to be able to come out here and plank and then not be real loud, especially when you're used to shooting big, heavy caliber bolt action guns. So let's shoot this thing a bit.
that Garmin Zero right now is reading, let's see, a average of 11, 1170, so 1,170 feet per second on here with a minimum of 11,151. It reads it in about three seconds. All right, so chronographs reading an average on here right now of 1,165 feet per second on there. Uh, minimum was a 1,135 feet per second. Max was 1,190 feet per second. 10 shots, uh, this Garmin chronograph is pretty freaking sweet. Works really well, but enough talk about that thing. Uh, the rifle, initial thoughts. If you're not used to the straight pull bolt action like this with this style rifle, it's very different than a standard bolt action lever um, where you, you bring the rifle up and you actually do that. Uh, it's quite a bit different. It's a little bit of a learning curve if you've never used one. However, Hammerly Arms has quite the reputation for making high-end, let's say, Olympic rifles, and they've been around for a very long time and made very good rifles. I didn't notice any issues with feeding or anything like that. Um, during zero, I had one issue, but I think that was user error. When you're running the pole on here, when you're actually running that bolt, you need to run it, let's say, a little bit more on the aggressive side so you clear that round out and then run it back forward. I think that it's going to probably break in a little bit and be a little bit more on the smoother side. However, it's easy to do and it is user friendly. I think that this thing could really fill a niche for a, um, let's say, if you're trying to teach your kids how to shoot or yourself or you're hunting, whatever, it could really fill that need and it's not too hard to do. So we've shot the American Eagle um, right now. Let me check the group here for you. We're at 50 yards. I say the group right now is printing about an inch and a half inch group. Um, that's a 10 shot, inch and a half inch group. Again, rough zero, it's not dead on. Um, but however, it is shooting fairly well for an ammunition that is well regarded as not being accurate and is far by and large, plenty accurate enough for hunting. So let's get some of those other ammos out. I'll show you them. And again, five shot fouling group for each one of those. And then we'll show you guys all the groups at the end. The Hammerly Arms 4B1 does not have a 1 MOA guarantee of 50 yards or anything like that. Um, I think it's a well-made quality rifle. I think it's going to end up being accurate. But in order to test that theory, we're going to try a bunch of different ammunitions through this. We're going to start off with Lapua Center X. We're going to then go to CCI Veloster 22LR, CCI Green Tag 22LR. This is going to be Ely Semi-Auto 22LR Bench Rest Precision. Then Ely 22LR Match. And then this could be Ely 10X. And then we're gonna do SK Rifle Match. And then SK High Velocity 22 Long Rifle. This is all stuff that we had on hand. We had procured for a previous rifle review. Uh, shoots fairly accurate, well regards being accurate. Between each one of these, every single ammo before I shoot it is gonna get a five round fouling group. Um, I know there's a lot of dispute over that. However, from scouring forums, five rounds seems to be the general average of what a lot of people like to see. So five round fouling group before each one of these ammos, then I'm gonna shoot a five round group to see how accurate each one is.
For each one of these groups, five round fouling group, five round shot group. Group number one, that's going to be Lapua Center X. That's the second best group we got total. The second group is a Veloster CCI, that's top right. The bottom left here is gonna be CCI Green Tag. Bottom right is going to be Ely Semi-Auto Benchrest Precision. Top left on our second target here, that's going to be Ely Match. Top right on our bottom target here, that's going to be Ely 10X. Bottom left, that's going to be SK Rifle Match. Down here, that's probably our third best group. And then our best group total was with SK High Velocity stuff, and that's down here. You see that's about a quarter inch group we shot with that. That's a five shot group, by far and large, the best shooting, and it's a high velocity one which also kind of makes sense. Our 10 shot group up here was with the Federal American Eagle, which we shot just for zero purposes and getting it on paper. Um, if I was gonna zero this rifle right now, I'd probably zero either with Lapua Center X, SK rifle, or if I'm just gonna hunt with it, probably that Federal American Eagle stuff. Overall though, this rifle shoots really well. What needs to be taken into consideration is the barrel that's on this rifle is not a match barrel. With that being said, they make a 20 inch match barrel that you can put on here. If I was this up for complete precision rig, 20 inch match barrel, then after that 20 inch match barrel, I'm gonna change out the trigger. The trigger for me is too heavy for this, but it's a good overall pull weight for a trigger for target shooting or teaching kids how to shoot, practicing, or even going out hunting. It's fine for that. There's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. But target, I think you need that 20 inch barrel and a precision type trigger in here. However, the rifle so far has been good. Uh, we had a few feeding issues, nothing major whatsoever. There were a few in there that was with a particular ammo from Ely that we noticed. And in addition to that, the bolt itself is a little bit different from myself being that straight pull like that without having to actually bring the bolt up and lock it and all that. Just bring it straight back all the way to the rear and then all the way forward it makes it very good as far as for like say reliability wise. But you have to be good as far as how you're running that bolt and be consistent. Overall, I think it's a fantastic rifle. I think it's well made. I think it's coming from a very well known, reputable manufacturer who's backed by Walther. In addition to that, it's a good overall package with tons of adjustability, tons of things you can change. It has a lot of stuff in it that you can actually go out in the market right now and get for this rifle, even though it's coming to the market brand new. So if you guys like this rifle, you have some thoughts on it, drop us a comment, drop us a like, let us know what you think. But until next time, stay tuned with Hunt Fish Shoot.